Assalamu alaikum and welcome back my fellow language learners to Adventures in Language. I'm your guide, Emily. In our last video, we talked about the fact that when you hear your target language out in the wild, it can sometimes sound quite different from how you learned it. And one of the reasons for that had everything to do with dialects. To recap, dialects are simply different ways of speaking a language. For example, my dialect of English, Midwestern Pittsburgh English, has characteristics that differ from other dialects, such as Southern American English or British English. In my dialect, I call rubber bands gum bands. I don't pronounce the word water as water, I pronounce it as water. And I say phrases like, the computer needs fixed, instead of the way other people might say it, the computer needs to be fixed. You see, every dialect has a particular way of using vocabulary, pronunciation, and grammar. Some dialects are similar, while others can vary wildly. For example, the dialects of English spoken in my neighboring state of Ohio, for example, sound pretty similar to mine. But if you compare my dialect of English with speakers of English in Georgia, Texas, England, or New Zealand, you'd notice that they sound quite a bit different. So what does this mean for how you approach learning your target language? Quite a lot, actually, and I like to call all of this the dialect dilemma, which is a catch-all term for all the questions related to navigating dialectal differences while you're learning your target language. So some of the most common questions are, how different are the dialects in my target language? Should I stick to learning just one dialect? Will exposure to multiple dialects confuse me? Rest assured that after watching this video, you'll be able to confidently navigate those dialect dilemma related questions and be on your way to achieving your fluency goals. And for those of you who might not know me yet, I'm Emily. I'm a linguist at Mango. I have my PhD in linguistics and a lifelong love for language learning. That was a lot of L's. Well, sans plus tarde, let's get to it. Here are the four things that you need to understand in order to navigate your dialect dilemma. One, mutual intelligibility two, communicative goals, three, hybrid dialects, and four, dialectal diversity. Okay, point number one, mutual intelligibility. If you've ever asked yourself, how different are the different dialects in my target language, then you were inquiring about what linguists call mutual intelligibility. If two language varieties have high mutual intelligibility, that means speakers of both groups can readily understand one another. For example, the Spanish spoken in Ecuador and Peru have high mutual intelligibility. So if you learned Spanish from an Ecuadorian speaker, you're going to be able to get around speaking Spanish in Peru as well. On the flip side, if two dialects are said to have low mutual intelligibility, that means they're not similar enough to be understood. Take Moroccan and Levantine Arabic, for example. There are two dialects of Arabic that have such low mutual intelligibility that learning one would mean you probably can't get by in the other. It's almost fair to think of them as two different languages, and some linguists do. Main takeaway when navigating the dialect dilemma, it's smart to do a little research into mutual intelligibility so you know you're spending your time wisely. Which brings us to point number two. Your communicative goals matter. At the end of the day, it really comes down to one question. Who do you want to be able to communicate with? If your communicative goals are broad in general, then it's probably best for you to focus on the most widely understood dialects of a language and then pick up dialectal features as they become useful. However, if your communicative goals are targeted, say being able to communicate specifically with your in-laws, then a targeted dialect learning approach could make a lot of sense. For those of you in the Mango fam who already use the app, you've probably picked up on the fact that the Mango app is actually structured to help you navigate dialectal diversity. For example, if you wanna learn Spanish, you have the choice to learn Latin American Spanish or Castilian Spanish, the Spanish spoken in Spain, each course featuring voices from that target dialect. Point number three, you can speak a hybrid dialect. A lot of language learners make the mistake of thinking that in order to sound fluent in a language, they need to have a pure accent or dialect when they speak. When I was learning Spanish, I started out learning Latin American Spanish. And then I lived in Spain for a while and I started to pick up that dialect. I ended up having a bit of an identity crisis because I felt like I needed to pick one or the other, but I didn't. My dialect in Spanish now has bits and pieces of all the places where I've spoken Spanish. And I think that's pretty cool. Here's the deal, unless you're training to become an international spy with a very specific backstory, having a hybrid dialect is totally fine and actually quite normal. Really all that matters is being able to communicate and be understood. So if you're doing that, you're succeeding. Long story short, dialectal diversity is a beautiful thing. Embrace it, lean into it, enjoy it. Okay, point number four, dialectal diversity can facilitate learning. 
Does exposure to different dialects add a level of complexity to your language learning? Yes. But can it also help you master the language faster and more effectively? Also yes. When you're a beginner in the language, you might want to pick and stick to one dialect. Doing so simplifies the process for a beginner, but it can be good once you've gotten your feet wet in the language to add a little bit of variation in your input in the form of dialectal diversity. And that's because it can help you learn more effectively. If you'd like us to do a video that breaks down what cognitive science and second language acquisition research has told us about the role of dialect diversity and input variation in language learning, let us know in the comments. Oh, and last thing, remember, it is all about your goals. How you approach dialectal diversity in your target language should be closely tied to your communicative goals. To that end, if you haven't recently checked in on your language learning goals, I highly recommend that you do. And if you'd like an easy step-by-step -step walkthrough to help you do that, check out our free Setting Good Goals worksheet, which you can find through the link in the description. Well, there you have it. The four things that you need to understand when it comes to navigating the dialect dilemma were one, Research the mutual intelligibility of the dialects in your target language. Two, be clear about your communicative goals in the language. Three, realize that you can speak a hybrid dialect. And four, understand that exposure to different dialects can help you learn more efficiently. Well, my fellow language learners, that's all for this time on Adventures in Language. If you're new here and you'd like to make sure that you're up to date on all of our awesome language learner content, then come join the Mango fam by subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell so you never miss another video from us. Psst, wondering what languages were used in today's video? You can find all that information more in the description. Rabaraka, and I look forward to hanging out with you here next time. Bye! Again, thanks for watching and don't forget to get your free Setting Good Goals worksheet which you can access through the link right here on the screen. In next week's video we're explaining how language learning is like hitting the gym with tips for how to build your language learning muscle. In the meantime you can catch up on all of our existing videos right here. Well see you next time on Adventures in Language. Bye!